OK, today we're talking about contractions, possessives and quantifiers. So let's start with the easy stuff, contractions. That's a contraction. A contraction is when in spoken English you omit some letters in order to cut down on the number of syllables. The most common, of course, are the uh, ones with the word not, right? Do not is don't. Should not is shouldn't. What's the full form of can't? Cannot, one word. For some reason, English. Uh, in English, cannot is one word. Um, and then you have. Somewhat less frequent contractions like. Um, If you see someone say shan't, it just means shall not. If you see, well, you, you should know this one, right? Will not is one of the few to not make sense. For some reason, it becomes won't. In less formal English, is not or are not can sometimes be contracted to ain't. Um, many people will say this is not correct, but in fact it is correct. It's just informal. Uh, and then you have. This one. This is. It is and you should remember that it's different from it's it's means belonging to it. Right, so if you see it with uh, this symbol is called an apostrophe. So if you see it with an apostrophe, this is. It is. If you see it's without an apostrophe, this is belonging to it. OK, and then we have some older contractions. You might see this in older poetry. Tis. This is the older form of it is. And then sometimes in poetry, because you have too many syllables, you need to reduce the number of syllables. So you might have something like. Even becomes in. You have. Um, especially for British English. In older pronunciations, this word is pronounced thorough. With two syllables, so you might see. Something like this to remind you it's one syllable. So as you can see, the point is that the apostrophe tells you that a letter or more than one letter has been omitted. Now, sometimes you have to look at the context to see what the original form is. For example, what is the original of heed? Well, it depends on the context. Sometimes you have he had, sometimes you have he would. Both of these are fine. Now, what's not fine is there's only one answer for he's or she's, let's say. And this must be the present tense. You cannot contract was. 
was cannot be contracted. This is something that I sometimes see people do. Uh, and then you have uh, the less for like contracting is and not are considered OK. Uh, in. Ordinary writing, everyday writing, but contracting the words like are. And have. These are considered less formal. These are like um, ain't. These are considered un informal. And the reason that these words exist is because this is how people talk in real life. So if you want to write down how people talk, you need a way to express that word. But if you're writing something for like a project or a report or a letter, like a formal letter, then usually we would not use these kinds of contractions. So again, contractions with is and not are fine for formal writing, but the others are not. Um, so sometimes people will think, oh, I can use this to omit any number of letters in the middle, and that's not true. There are only specific patterns that people, when they see it, they know what you are omitting, and so these are accepted contractions. Uh, another one that I use, if you watch my videos on YouTube of the recordings of the class, uh, in the video descriptions, I will sometimes use this one. You guys know what this one is? Continued. So there was a break and now we are continuing. Uh, this is a contraction that you cannot say. It is specifically for writing. Uh, another contraction used in writing is, for example, this one. Yes, national. Um, and these are simply to save space on the page. Uh, but when you see this word you, and you, you want to say it, you still have to say the whole word. OK, one last thing about contractions. And for this, I can't use my favorite writing program, Notepad. I have to use Office. OK. Is there a difference between these two she's? Can you see a difference between these two she's? OK, yes, yeah, so the capital letter, what else? Here, in Notepad, this is uh, a regular straight apostrophe. But in Word, this is a curled apostrophe, right? It changes direction. Right. Can you tell the difference between these two? One is straight, one changes direction. You should use the one that changes direction. This one is more correct. The, the, the one that changes direction, the, the curled one. This one is more correct. The straight one is actually used in math. Uh, when you're looking at the degree of an angle. Right? Uh, how many minutes? How many seconds? You would use the straight one. The one, the curled one that changes direction is the correct apostrophe. Um, but I know that a lot of you write your assignments on your phone, 
and your phone may not have the curled one. You might only have the straight one. Uh, so I usually don't care too much, but you should know which one is more correct. OK, so that's contractions. Do you have questions? OK, so the next unit, today we're doing three things, right? So the second thing is possessives. So possessives is something belonging to something. We have two kinds in English. Using the apostrophe. Or using of. Now there are many specific rules about when you can use which one, but the general rule is. That if the if the two are separate. John is not his dog. His dog is not him. These two are separate. Then we prefer using the apostrophe. But. If the two things are hard to separate. That's a bad. That's a bad example, sorry. If the two things are hard to separate. Like my love for John and John. Are hard to like think about separately. Then we prefer using of. This is not a strict rule. This is a principle. It's only when you really can't separate something that you must use of. So for example, um, The top of my head. You can't separate the top from the head, right? It's one thing. And some people might think, but that's not possession. Right? Exactly. And that's why you can't choose. You must use the word of. If you do use of, like in this one, you must remember that there is an ambiguity. This phrase, the love of John, has two meanings. It could mean. My love for John. It could also mean John's love for me. Uh, and in grammar, we call this the subjective and the objective genitive. You don't have to remember that. You do have to remember that it goes in two directions. Uh, the love of John, does the love belong to John? Or is it love that I am giving John? Um, so hopefully when you write something, this will be clear in the context. But you should remember that there is this ambiguity here. So let's talk about some exceptions related to the apostrophe. I just mentioned this one, right? It is of it. This is the only possessive S without an apostrophe. And the reason is because the apostrophe has been taken by the contraction. Then we have things like. Some people, especially British people, will say that this S is unnecessary because you already have an S in James. Uh, but I think logically speaking, you still have to add it there. Um, but if the noun is a plural ending in S, uh, so in this case, I'm talking about more than one letter then you don't need to add another S. This S is already a grammatical S. So putting together those two rules, do you need to add an S here? If you think yes, raise your hand. 
If you think no, raise your hand. OK, well, actually it follows the same rule as James, so you do need to add an S. Right, this Z is not a grammatical Z. It's part of the name, so you have to add a grammatical S. Again, this is not a strict rule. Other people will have other ways of talking about this, but my personal opinion is this is the way that makes the most sense. Right. Questions about possessives. I should also talk about the possessive uh, adjectives. So um, we have first person singular, first person plural. These are my and our. Second person singular and plural, both are your. Third person singular, he, she, it, is her, it's, and then plural, they, is, there. Right, I'm sure you know this. I'm helping you to refresh your memory. Now, as for there, you, you should be careful because there are three words that sound exactly the same. There, there and there. But once you write them out, it should be clear which one means what. The one with the apostrophe is omitting a letter. This is they are. There is possessive belonging to them. There is answering the question where. All right, so it's spelled the same. Where? There. Speaking of pronunciation, do you guys have the issue of you can't tell whether someone is saying can or can't? Right? Is it hard for you to distinguish between that? Here's the key. When, when a native speaker says can't, the T may not come out, but the word will end suddenly. So can and can't. So if it sounds shorter, it's probably cannot, can't. Even if there's no T sound. This is the same for all of the other contractions. Don't, won't, shouldn't, doesn't. The T may not come out, but it stops suddenly. So I can hear you and I can't hear you. I can tell you and I can't tell you. Can you start to hear the difference? Yeah. I you can hear the difference or you can't hear the difference. OK, yes, and also when we use can in an affirmative sentence, like a, a simple positive sentence, it is not emphasized. It's just like another modal or auxiliary verb. It helps the main verb, so we don't emphasize the sound. But if you're negating, you want to say cannot, that is important information, and so that word can't is emphasized. So I can hear you, I can hear you, but I can't hear you. Right? The emphasis is different. Uh, unless your affirmative is simply I can. Then of course it is emphasized because you have omitted the rest of the sentence. Can can you hear me? I can. I can't. Yeah, so uh, when it's part of the longer sentence, you don't emphasize. Can you hear me? Can. But and if you answer. Uh, with the simple um, uh, abbreviated form, I can or I can't. The difference is more noticeable. OK, and then the third thing we're talking about. Actually, no, let's let's do some practice. Well, 
No, let's finish. OK, so the third thing we're talking about. Is quantifiers. Like uh, some many. This kind of thing, quantifiers, quantity, how many, how much? We're doing that this week, right? Are, are we doing that this week? Yes, quantifiers. OK, so we're doing this. Now, the thing about quantifiers is that. I as a native speaker have a very good sense of when I can use one thing and when I cannot use it. But the rules are not easy to remember. So I'm going to use the textbook for this one. Quantifiers. OK, so the first one, uh, the, the textbook divides quantifiers into three kinds. Neutral, which just means plural. Uh, many quantifiers that mean a lot and few quantifiers that mean a little bit. So the first one neutral just means plural. The most common is some. But if you change it to a question or a negation, you have to change it into any. I have some apples, but I don't have any apples. Uh, we have some visitors, but we uh, do you have any rooms? So an, a positive indicative sentence uses some, but questions and negation use any. You can use some and any for countable and uncountable nouns, right? Some water, any water, uncountable, fine, no problem. Um, however, you there you can also use some. In the singular, so this is not plural, right? The first one, some child is one child. This just means a child. Um, but it emphasizes the fact that we know nothing about this child. It is incredibly indefinite, indeterminate, vague. So if I say. I saw a guy in the hall singing happy birthday. That just means I saw a guy. But if I said I saw some guy in the hall singing happy birthday, that means I don't know anything about this person. I think it's kind of strange. I have no idea what's going on. Some used as uh, with the singular noun takes away information from the context. If I say a guy, you might expect me to keep talking about the guy. But if I say some guy, I'm just telling you, oh, that's strange. And that's it. I'm taking information away from the context. Um, and it also you can use any to mean. Um, it, I think it says it below here. Uh, you it to mean uh, any single possible person or any single possible thing. So if I say. Um, like here, any child. It means not just a child, but it out of all the possible children, if you pick any person. Like any volunteers. Is. Assuming the question, are there any volunteers? So if someone says yes, if there are any volunteers, they should sign up by Friday. Now, in addition to using any, you can also negate a sentence with no. So if you use any in a neg negative sentence, you are negating the verb, right? Aren't. If you use no, you are negating the noun, no children. There aren't any children. There are no children. These two mean exactly the same thing. 
but in spoken English, we usually you negate the verb. We we more often say aren't instead of no children. Uh, negating the noun sounds more formal. And then you have compound words like someone, something, somewhere. Uh, and we have more that it doesn't say. Sometime, someplace, somehow. All of these words follow the exact same rules as the simple some, any, and no. It just adds another concept. So um, I think we have example sentences, yes. So there is something is positive. There isn't anything is negative. Or you can say there's nothing. The same rules, it's just adding another concept of uh, this is a noun, not just a quantifier. Uh, and then here it says, usually we say, is there anyone in the room? But if you think there already is someone, if you assume the answer is yes, then you can use someone. Is there someone? Or like here, would you like some tea? Assumes that the person will say yes. That's why it's using some instead of any. Um, actually, I use this in class a lot. Often, I instead of saying the correct, do you have any questions? I will often say, do you have questions or do you have some questions? By using the word some, I'm assuming you do have questions, and so I'm encouraging you to ask those questions. If I say, do you have any questions? It's assuming that you do not have questions, and so it is actually disencouraging you from asking. So up to this point, do you have some questions? OK. Um, quantifiers before pronouns like them, us, always use the word of. Some of, any of, none of. You always have to have the word of. But no is more like an adjective, so you don't need of. So some of the children, any of the children, none of the children. But no actors, not none, uh, not no of the actors. Right, and so we've been talking about some any and no, but other neutral quantifiers that simply tell you more than one include several, a number of. Uh, enough is kind of different. I'm not sure why the author put enough here. Uh, several, a number of numerous. A lot of is also considered neutral. So next we have large quantities. These mean many, more than you might expect. The main difference is that uh, some of these can only be used for uncountable nouns. Some of these can only be used for countable nouns. So for example, much and many. Without the word of, many can only be used with countable nouns. There are many people in the room. Much can only be used with uncountable nouns. There is much goodwill in the room. You have much money in the bank. But in fact, even in this in these cases, much is not very common. More common is simply to use the word, uh, the phrase a lot of. For some reasons, one reason, as we covered last week, a lot of applies to every situation. As long as it's more than you expect, you can say a lot of. Countable, uncountable, not sure. You can always say a lot of. Uh, so it's easier to use, more people use it. So like saying a lot of whiskey is a very good quality, sounds natural, but saying much whiskey is a very good quality sounds strange, even though it's correct. 
many also has a similar um, feeling. It's not as serious as much. We still say many in daily life, but it's slightly more common to say a lot of. Right, he has much money. This is not normal English. The author is careful to emphasize. Uh, the ex exception is if you say so much, very much, too many, so many, very many. If you emphasize it, then it sounds better. It sounds more natural. You can also use much and many in negation and questions. Now, the th sometimes uh, students will make mistakes using of. The key with the word of, whether it's some of, many of, none of, the key is that of must be followed by the. or some kind of determiner before the noun, right? The houses, my friends, that beer. You cannot simply add a noun right after of, uh, a quantifier of, and it has to have a determiner in the middle before you can add a noun. So like you as a group, what does it say here? Uh, you, pronouns also count. You cannot just add a regular noun. So many of you, but you can't say many of students. You have to say many of the students. Uh, and this rule applies for any formula that follows quantifier of blank and then noun. You cannot add a regular noun right after the of. Right? The, something is missing here. Something is missing here. Um, OK, then we have small quantity quantifiers. These are fewer than you expect. The main difference is little is used with not uh, uncountable nouns and few is used with countable nouns. Now, there's also a difference between few and a few. Few is smaller than expected, but a few is small, but still more than you expected. Another way to say this is if you say a few or a little, you're emphasizing that there is still this much left. But if you simply say few or little, you're, sim you're saying almost none. Right, so a few is more positive and few is more negative. So for example, this is a good one. A few of the paintings in this gallery are really good. So you're saying, oh, like this one is pretty good. That one is pretty good. I remember the good ones. Not there are not many, but I remember which ones are good. If you simply say few of the paintings in this gallery are really good, you're not counting. You're just saying most of them are trash. Right, so adding a a few is emphasizing what you have left. If you don't add a, you're simply saying there's barely any left, almost nothing, almost none. So here, I've got a little money left. So what should we do with this money? But if you take out the a, if you simply say I've got little money left, that means I'm almost out of money. The situation might be the same, but you're emphasizing a different perspective. So as I was saying, right, few of my friends were there. I was disappointed. 
a few of my friends were there. I was quite happy. Same situation, different perspective. Uh, OK, and then we have each and every. Both of these words are singular. Every person means every single person, so it is singular. Everyone, everything are all singular words. Each is also singular. But as it the textbook tells us, the meaning is slightly different and they cannot be interchanged. You cannot use one in place of the other. Every is every single person, but they all have the same thing in common. Each is every single person and they are all different. So for example, every child was reading a book, so every single child is doing the same thing. But each child was reading a different book, so each child is doing a slightly different thing. Both of them are singular, but it the difference is are you talking about them in a similar way or in a dissimilar way? You have to fill in details on every page, so every page is some something you have to write. But you have to fill in details on each page individually. This emphasizes you cannot just jump to the end to write. You have to write on every single different page. He makes the same mistake every time. He makes a different mistake each time. I think this pair should be the most obvious. Every is similar, each is different. Uh, yeah, I think that those are the important points. So you can say all of, or you can say all without the of. Uh, although, you know, all of I think makes more sense. Then you have things like all children, which means all children everywhere. And all the children or all of the children, which means you have a group of children and you're talking about all of them. Right, so all diamonds are valuable. All of the diamonds in this shop are very valuable. The key is the use of the word the, right? The gives you a specific context. Uh, if you don't have the, if you simply just use the word all like you use the word no, it's general it's applying to everything whole we're not going to we're not going to see the word whole you're probably only going to see the word whole in this sentence tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth this is what they say on tv when somebody uh, is going to give testimony in a court of law Um, the key point here is that most is more than many. Many just means like more than you expect. Most means more than half. Uh, um, enough. Yeah, we talked about most of this already. Yeah, OK, so that's quantifiers. Do you have some questions? All right, let's do the practice. Where's the practice? Page eight. Add 
the apostrophe in the right place if it needs one. I think they all need one. So add the apostrophe in the right place. There are 15 questions. I'll give you five minutes. Six minutes. If you finish early, you can take a short break uh, and we'll come back to compare answers in the second period, uh, in eighth period, the budget. Uh, also, if I call your name, please come to the front. What Johnny means at the watching that you mean, Ye Man Ru, Tsai Ji Xuan. Are you here? No. Okay. I also have an announcement, uh, a commercial, I should say.
他觉得整个是，到常见到极限。那为什么 is are not in and？ 对，这个跟 w o n t 一样不合理。啊？这个跟 w o n t 变 w o n t 一样不合理。就是，但就是这样，就是不是 is not 不是 isn't， 然后 are not 是 aren't， 对，那、啊、为什么是 and？ 就是比较不正式，有些人会缩写成。哦，就是可能国外就是很常会讲这种话，对，哦，对啊啊，这个是这个也是吗？ show 那就是，这个 can， 这个是比较正式的，甚至平常也不会看到， oh, oh, oh. 但是如果你看到的话，你就要知道是这个意思。哦哦哦哦，那这个也就是，这个也就是他的缩写这样。对。这个是，哦，为什么这个要就是要加 s？ 对，就是它已经有一个类似 s 的音在后面了。嗯。但是如果你这个要加 s 的话，逻辑上面这个应该要加 s。对对啊，为什么 James？ 那那怎么念 James？James。James is。对。我跟你讲，即便这边不加 s， 你还是要念成 James。那真的假的？对。所以这是一定要加 s 吗？还是说可以不用？有些人会讲不用，但是我自己觉得逻辑上面这是一个模板概念，而不是发音问题。所以是还要再加个 s。我觉得应该要加加。因为不是通常尾尾就是它的字尾如果有 s 就是。就是复数嘛，对不对？对啊。对，但是你看，这个这个 s 本来就是模板概念。哦，哦哦哦如果它是复数，就是直接加个点这样子，但是它就是名字，就是还要加 s 哦。刚这个说那个 much money 不能不能这样讲，然后文法但是很少做。那如果要讲，他是不是刚那个那个讲？意思是说，就是我刚可能没有讲很清楚，就是肯定句用 a lot of 比较常见，但是疑问句跟否定句用 much 跟 many 比较常见。所以 I have a lot of money， 但是 I don't have much money。哦哦。你也可以说 I don't have a lot of money， 对，但是 much 跟 many 通常。是肯定句以外的情况才会用到的。肯定句以外，就是不会用在肯定句这样子。是可以还是不常见？哦，就是，那这个可以吗 ？Too much money 这样可以？可以可以，就是 much and many 这个强调的话比较常见。Money 应该不能用 many 吧？应该不是。不是我说我说 much 跟 many 这两个量词。哦哦哦哦哦。刚说 many of 就是什么什么什么 of 什么那个为什么要加？那规定是这样子，如果你又有这样子又有 of，、嗯、那如果你的名词是一般名词，它不是代名词的话，嗯、你中间一定要加一个东西，嗯、不管是的还是 my， 或是 that，、嗯、就是你不能只是把名词接上去。哦哦哦，好，谢谢老师。
Let's compare answers. Uh, OK, number three. How do I do this? Number three, babies, apostrophe, toys are often brightly colored. Number four, it's important to make sure uh, babies' toys are safe. Number five, someone called, but because of the static on the phone, dying, I couldn't understand the caller's words. It says someone, so there's only one caller. Number six, a receptionist. That's not how you spell it. Receptionist's job is to write down callers. Okay. Right, because there's more than one name, so there's more than one caller. And take messages. So receptionist is 接待员, or is 接, 接话员. Number, number seven, newspapers aren't interested in yesterday's news. There's only one yesterday. They want to report today's events. Number eight, each flight has at least two pilots. The Pilot seats. First of all, it told you two pilots. Secondly, it says seats, plural. So pilots is also plural. The pilot seats are in a small area called the cockpit. Ji Chang. Number nine, rainforests cover 5% of the Earth's surface. We only have one Earth but have 50% of the different species of plants. OK. Number 10. Mosquitoes wings move incredibly fast. Number 11. A mosquitoes wings move about 1000 times per second. It's, this is correct, no apostrophe is correct. It's wing movement is the sound we hear when a mosquito is humming in our ears. Number 12, the average pulse of a human being is 70 beats per minute. A uh, cat's heart beats 130 times per minute. Elephants have slow heartbeats. Did you know that on Elephant's heart beats only 25 times per minute per minute. Thirteen, when we went to the circus, we saw three elephants. All of us enjoyed watching the elephant's tricks because it told us three elephants. So this is plural. Elephant's tricks. 
Elephants are quite intelligent animals that can be taught to respond to spoken commands. 14. Elephants like to roll in mud. The mud protects the animals bodies. Sorry, more than one body. So animals bodies. Right, plural bodies, plural animals. From insects and the sun and number 15. When we were walking in the woods, we saw an animal footprints on the muddy path. Yes, it is plural footprints, but it says un. So there's only one, one animal. Questions? OK, during the break, somebody asked me a good question. I forgot to mention this. How do you say this? James's. You had both S's uh, are pronounced. James's. But if it's a plural word like animals, there's only one S, so animals. But if it's a singular word that ends in S, it's James's. So it's a, a question of pronunciation. OK, page nine. Make the nouns possessive if necessary, so sometimes this will be correct. So like here, I met Dan sister yesterday, change Dan to Dan's. But if it says I met Dan and his sister yesterday, this is correct. Do not change. Uh, let's see. Oh, OK, there are 14. So I'll give you seven minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Número tres. I know Jack's roommates. Cuatro. I know Jack well. He's a good friend of mine. No change. This is correct. Cinco. I have one roommate. My roommate's desk is always messy. Be sure to spell this word correctly, right? Two O's, two M's. Six, you have two roommates. Your roommates, plural. Desks are always neat. Number seven, Joanne and Betty are sisters, correct? Number eight, Joanne is Betty's sister. My sister's name is Sonia. Number nine, my name is Richard. I have two sisters. My sister's plural names are Joanne and Betty. Ten. There is an old saying, a woman's work is never done. And it's true, this is an old saying. It used to mean that there's always something to do in the house. Today, it means that men often need a lot of help. Number 11, I read a book about the changes in women's roles and men's roles in modern society. Number 12, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. We cannot see Jupiter's surface from the Earth because thick clouds surround the planet. Number 13, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Mercury's atmosphere is extremely hot and dry. Number 14, Mars's surface has some of the same characteristics as the Earth's surface, but Mars could not support life as we know it on Earth. The plants and animals that live on the Earth could not live on any of the other planets in our solar system. Now, there is an there is an asterisk here. I wonder why. Where's Mada Xing Hao? Uh huh. Okay, I think what this asterisk is telling us is that many names in ancient Greece and Rome do not add the second S. So, for example, Socrates, Sugalati. The possessive just adds one apostrophe. This is not the rule that we're following in this class, but this is the rule for ancient Greek and Roman names. Mars is the Roman god of war. So if you follow the ancient Roman convention, it should be Mars apostrophe no S. But here we're not talking about the god of war. We're talking about the planet. So I think you should still add the S. 15. Venus is sometimes called the Earth's twin because the two planets are almost the same size. But like Mars, Venus's surface is extremely hot and dry. So this is the same rule as for Mars. If you're talking about the Roman goddess of beauty and love, no S. But if you're talking about the planet, S. 16. Oh, look, it's talking about the names. OK. The planet's English names come from ancient Roman mythology. For example, Mars was the name of the god of war in ancient Rome. Jupiter was the king of the gods. Mercury, who was Jupiter's son was the messenger of the gods. Venus was the goddess of love, beauty, and creativity. 
Venus's son was named Cupid. We're talking about the goddess, right? Venus's son was named Cupid, the god of love and desire. OK, questions? Yes. Yes, OK, so in number 15, we're talking about the planet, right? Venus's surface. But in 16, we're talking about the goddess. Uh, so here it's talking about the ancient Roman goddess. And according to the special rules for ancient Greece and Rome, we don't add the second S. It's a very small exception that you will never have to use anytime else. OK, so. Now we're going to talk about it. 呃，这是一个很罕见的例外。在讨论古希腊、罗马神奇或是人物的时候，如果他名字 S 结尾，所有格就不再加第二个 S。这是只有这个情况会出现的例外。OK， other questions？ OK， page ten。OK， so。Uh, this one you have to think about possessive. You also have to think about singular plural. Uh, Twelve, qu ten questions. Eleven questions. No, no, no. Yeah, ten questions. I'll give you four minutes. Four minutes. Let's try four minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Number three, my uncle is my father's brother. Number four, I have four aunts. All of my aunt's homes are within walking. Sorry, all of my aunt's homes are within walking distance of my mother's apartment. Yes, one apartment, OK. Five. Esteban's aunt's oldest son is a violinist. Esteban is a Spanish name. Esteban. Number six. Bill's wife. That's not right. Bill's wife is a factory worker. Number seven. I walked into my boss's office. That's right, three S's. Number eight, I borrowed the secretary's pen to fill out the application form. Number nine, five astronauts were aboard the space shuttle. The astronauts safe return to Earth was a welcome sight to millions of television viewers. Number 10, it is the people's right to know what the city is going to do about the housing problem. So here it says the people. So this is not the plural of person. This is talking about the public, the, the people of the whole country. But whether it's singular or plural, the possessive looks the same. Number 11. OK, I need to. Number 11. Quite a few diplomats are assigned to our city. Almost all of the diplomats children attend a special school. Number 12, a diplomat's work invariably involves numerous meetings. Invariably means unchangeably, which just means always. OK, questions? Yes. Number four, I have four ants and all of my aunt's homes. So this entire section is plural. OK, thank you. Other questions? All right, next page, number 11, uh, page 11. Same thing, 12 questions. I think you are getting more and more familiar with this question type. So 12 questions, I'll give you three minutes. OK, hang on, hang on. It says uh, add plural if necessary add apostrophe as appropriate. So you have to think about possession and you have to think about singular or plural. OK, so it's a bit harder. 12 questions, I'll give you five minutes.
Let's compare answers. Number one, most leaves are green. Number two, my mother's apartment is small. Number three, potatoes are good for us. Number four, do birds have teeth? Number five, Tom's last name is Miller. Number six, two thieves stole Mr. Lee's car. Number seven, mountains are high and valleys are low. Number eight, a good toy holds a child's interest for a long time. Number nine, children's toys need to be strong and safe. Number 10, all of the actors' names are listed on page six of your program. Right, it says all of them, so this must be plural. Number 11, teachers are interested in young people's ideas. So in this case, people is the plural of person. So ideas must also be plural. Number 12, almost all monkeys have opposable thumbs, which means thumbs that can like move like this. On not only their hands, but also their feet. OK. You could say singular hand, but then you would also have to say singular foot. In this case, the prompt gives you feet, so it must be the plural hands. It's a parallel construction, pinching jago. People have thumbs only on their hands. OK, questions? Great. Let's see how many questions is this? Four. OK, we have time for this. Let's do let's finish this page number uh, page 11. Uh, so add apostrophes if necessary. Three questions. I'll give you three minutes.
Let's compare answers. Number two, psychologists have developed many different kinds of tests. A personality test is used to evaluate an individual's personal characteristics such as friendliness or trustworthiness. Number three, many mythological stories tell of heroes encounters with giants or dangerous animals. In one story, the hero's encounter with a dragon saves a village from destruction. Number four, children's, sorry, children's play is an important part of their lives. OK, in this case, the word play is uncountable. It is a kind of situation. So children's play is an important part of their lives. It teaches them about their environment while they are having fun. For instance, they can learn that boats float and can practice ways to make boats move across water. Toys are not limited to children. Adults have their own toys, such as pleasure boats, and children have theirs, such as miniature boats. Adults. Oh, that's not how you spell that. Adults toys are usually much more expensive than children's toys. OK, questions? Number three. OK, so heroes with ES, this is plural. So encounters, plural. It's talking about more than one hero. So because the plural already has an S, we don't need to add another S after the apostrophe. This is just a simple plural noun possessive. But the second one, this is one hero, one encounter, one hero. OK, good. Other questions? OK, homework. Um, we have a f one more page of apostrophes, and then we have quantifiers. We didn't get to the quantifier questions today. Right, so please do up to the end of page 16. 请写到十六页结束. OK, see you next week. Oh, next week we're going to be talking about nouns and pronouns, I think. Let me check again. Oh, pronouns and demonstratives. OK, demonstratives are like this, that, these, those. OK, OK, now see you next week.